Welcome everyone to Sporadics by Sideline Sports Network. I appreciate y'all coming on and watching uh, the new update videos and the videos that we've been putting out over the past couple of weeks. Um, y'all support has been amazing. Uh, I just released a video right before this one um, about Demory Tate entering the transfer portal and uh, Fintrell Cypress that's, that's potentially coming to Florida State. It's no facts yet, but like I said, I don't know. Just go check that video out because I don't see why else Demory Tate's deciding to to leave unless he's um, under the impression that Cyprus is coming or maybe others. But I think Cyprus is the biggest threat, so I think that might be the reason why he went ahead and entered. But go check that video out and tell me what you think. Make sure you comment on that one. And also comment on this video because this one's about all of the guys that were on the visit this weekend, and some are still visiting as of today. Um Obviously, you got your your commits already uh, that are that are here, like five star wide receiver Akeem Williams. He's been here over the weekend. Uh, Vendrevius Jacobs. He's been here over the weekend. Uh, Keith Sampson's been here over the weekend, and then you've had Darrell Jackson, which is the first transfer. Um, well, one of the first transfers that has committed to Florida State. He was there over the weekend, and then you had Keldrick Falk that was there on his unofficial visit. And then you had Lamont Green Jr. that was there as well, which Lamont had an amazing um, – it just looked like he had an amazing time. Keldrick Falk said that he was having a blast on his visit, even though it was unofficial. He was having a great time. Samson definitely had a great time. Uh, we dropped a short on here earlier. We also dropped um, – what it was, what it looked like behind the scenes of what the guys go through to take the pictures and a, a a really cool thing about uh, Samson is they brought him out. So he wanted to wear the uh, gloves and they had to keep going back and getting bigger gloves because his hands have grown since the first time that he was there. Um, to me, those are the things that are cool to find out about the guys. Like when they were first there, here's the gloves you wore last time. Um, his hands have grown that much since the last time that he was there. That's how fast these young men are growing. That's how fast really the pace of, the youth is, is it's pretty amazing to see them grow that quick though for your hands to go from an extra large to a two X. I mean, that's, that's a big jump. That's, that's not a small thing. So, so already gained size and a guy that was really, you know, with Samson being a defensive tackle, he has a really good relationship with uh, the 2022 commit who I think is going to do big things uh, coming up next year's uh, Quayshon Sapp. Well, Samson and Sapp seemed to have a really, really, really good relationship. The entire time that he was there, Sapp was there. Um, they were messing around on the field, messing around back and forth with each other. Um, and that's really good to see that these guys have a, a brotherhood, brotherhood already started and a friendship already started. And a lot of times you don't see defensive players hanging out with offensive players. Uh, but like I've told a lot of y'all, uh, Quayshon Sapp special. There's a lot of things about him that people don't know yet that you will get to – you'll learn over time how great he is and how welcome, welcoming he is to the guys that are coming. Um, but Samson was having a great time. Madrevious Jacobs was having a great time. Um, and I'm not making this a cliche like they were all just having a great time. They really were. Florida State did a really good job on these visits for all of these guys. And they were doing a great job at multitasking because this weekend was the groundbreaking ceremony for the standalone facility for Florida State as well. So all of these things that are going on for this staff to be able to multitask back and forth is really good to see. It's really great that they're, they've got their stuff together, that the right guys are there for their visit, the right guys are you know in place for when Coach Norvell and others are gone to – to do their speeches on the standalone facility to accept and to tell everybody how much they appreciate the investment that they're putting into the, the football program, not only the football program, but also into the university of Florida state, like all of this matters so much and all of it's happening this weekend to see them multitask was really cool, but you've got, we're going to start off with Andy Jean. He's a UF commit. Um, four star wide receiver. Uh, a lot of people have, you know, had him tied to, to the University of Florida for quite some time. Uh, not a lot of people expected it to be much of much of anything by him coming to Florida State just to visit. 
Well, why he's been on his visit, he's been posting a lot of scriptures. Y'all know what that means. When they post a lot of scriptures, there's things going on. Um, he was extremely excited for what was going on at Florida State. He was very excited to see how all of the guys were interacting with each other, previous guys, current guys, um, the coaches, how they interact with them while they're on their visits. And he was really enjoying what he saw and really enjoying what was going on. And then you move on to someone like uh, – I want to say – I don't want to butcher his name, but it's Christopher Odo. I'm pretty sure. Three-star offensive lineman. Um, he has a pretty cool video that uh, Warchant did. Um, they did an interview with him. It's pretty funny. Go check it out as well. I, again, guys, I don't, I don't want – y'all not to support other people. I want you to support everybody that loves Florida State. As long as they're giving out accurate information and they're doing a good job, by all means, support them. Because uh, you'll probably get bored if you only watch me all of the time. Hopefully not. But if if so, make sure you go and uh, help support others as well. Uh, as long as it doesn't stop you from supporting me, we're good. Um, but anyways, then you move on to someone like um, – I'm not going in any particular order. I'm just going based off of memory of who had a great time. Um Keldrick Falk, a lot of people were worried about if he didn't show up this weekend, that he was probably going to Auburn, um, that it was, you know, doomsday for Florida State with Keldrick Falk for, with uh, his recruitment, stuff to that nature. He had a really good time. Uh, I will report that multiple people have released um, that he is giving Auburn one more shot. He's actually going to Auburn today. If he's not already there. Um, I still don't think Florida State has anything to worry about there. I think that he came and solidified what he needed to see at Florida State. It's still the same place that he visited, still the same coaches. They're still going to utilize him the same way. But he's going to do his due diligence and go on. It's visits, guys. They're have, these things are fun. They are fun to go do. And a lot of guys love being recruited. So I absolutely think he should go. I think he should go and, and experience every one of the possible visits that he's got. And we're very short you know, away a very short time away from uh, early signing day on the 21st of December. So, and it's really close to his home. So I don't knock him for going. I still don't think we have anything to worry about. I think too many things are wrong at Auburn for us to worry about it. I don't think he wants to go be part of a huge rebuild. Um, and maybe he does, but I don't personally think that he does. I think he would rather be at Florida State. There's uh, quite a few people here that he really cares about. Um, and I think we end up getting him on early signing day. Uh, and another uh, gentleman that I think had – I want to say his name right too. Keandre Jones. He's an Auburn transfer, three-star offensive lineman. I think he had a blast being here. I think things went really well for him. He got to see what he wanted to see at Florida State. I think everybody was extremely welcoming to him as well. And I think that it's a, a completely different – again, it's that Auburn-Florida State thing, right? So we're worried about losing a commitment off of a high school kid to Auburn, but Auburn's fixing to lose, potentially lose a transfer from Auburn to Florida State in the offensive line. So obviously these guys are interested in similar schools and there's reasons why. Um, but I think uh, Keandre Jones had a great time at Florida State, and I think that we have a huge shot at getting him. I think we lead the way in that uh, recruitment. Uh, then you've got Casey Roderick. Uh, Roderick, if I say that right. Um, he's a Colorado transfer, three-star offensive lineman. He definitely had a good time. Um, and our staff is extremely strong on getting him. They really, really want him. Um, he'd be a vital piece to our offensive line. You all do know that we're losing people like Dylan Gibbons. We're losing quite a few guys that we got to make up for and we got to make up for quick. Now, we do have some 2022 guys like Quayshon Sapp, uh, Early, and some other guys that are going to be able to step in place but they can't play all the snaps. And then you got to worry about injuries. Even if they're not long-term injuries, they could be short-term injuries. You have to bring in enough guys to rotate on that offensive line. It's a very important. The trenches are most important, in my opinion. Um, and most people will probably say the same thing. So to bring these other ones in is very important. And y'all know defensive tackle is important. So getting Darrell Jackson that was on uh, campus this weekend, which he's already committed to Florida State, but he was still on a visit. And for them to treat him the same way, for him to have a great time was awesome. Um, then you got someone like Brandon Fisk uh, from Western Michigan, uh, four-star transfer defensive tackle. I heard that his visit was absolutely amazing, that they did a great job of rolling out the red carpet for him, uh, getting to see all the facilities, getting to check out 
you know, the campus to the, to the, to that degree. But what's really important to him is, is the classroom. What degree he's going to get is very important to him. And for Florida State to be offering the, the type of classes that he wants is really awesome. Um, it, it's a really good fit. And I think we have a huge shot at getting him. Um, and I really, really want him as well. Um, and then you've got, let's see who else that I was, let's see who I was worried about maybe going somewhere else. I don't know if Edwin Joseph was on campus this weekend or not, but I do know earlier on in the week or well, midweek, um, Hakeem Williams was hanging out with Edwin Joseph and they were watching the, um, we've got, a a guy that's committed to Virginia as a linebacker, Cameron Robinson. And they were out watching him play a game, if I'm not mistaken. And when I say them, Hakeem Williams was with Edwin Joseph. And I think it was 247 that did a video, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and they were talking to Hakeem and talking to Edwin about what they liked about Florida State, about you know what are they looking for in Florida State. Because I think Edwin's going on a visit somewhere else this weekend. He wasn't at Florida State. He went somewhere else this weekend. But I have a huge feeling that Edwin, we're in the, the driver's seat with him. Uh, Hakeem is very confident that he's coming to Florida State as well. Uh, he said that multiple times in that video. Um, and I think we get Edwin Joseph. And I think Edwin Joseph is a huge get for Florida State. I think he's going to do great things in his college career. Um Florida State's on a, a big hot streak right now, in my opinion. I think that there's going to be a couple of surprises on early signing day. I think we signed 19 to 20 guys in total. Um, and then the rest will be transfer portal guys, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people are saying that eventually Florida State's going to have to get away from the transfer portal and start recruiting better. I want Florida State to recruit better. I'm not saying that I don't. But if they're going to go through the hard part at other schools, as far as recruits go, they go and they, they settle you know, most of the year because it's their true freshman year, and then they, they don't like what they see and they hit the transfer portal and they end up at Florida State anyway. Now we just got them a year seasoned and they're, they're even more ready to go and they got a chip on their shoulder to, to really show out. So that's what I like about the transfer portal personally. I think that if you miss on guys in the recruitment – department that later on because of the relationship that you built with them if they don't do well at their the school that they choose or things just aren't working out for them that that relationship that florida state has with them already is already a huge you know niche into the next session which the next session will be the transfer portal when they're ready to transfer the following season and i think florida state's doing a great job with that i think florida state pulls in a lot of guys they've already had uh relationships with in the past i think that's why you're seeing what Florida State can do with the transfer portal because of look at this year previous. I think it was eight of the 11 transfers that we brought in ended up being all ACC players. Um, you look at Micah Pittman. Guys, I can go on for days, but you got Micah Pittman. You got Jared Verse. You got Trey Benson. I mean, all above guys uh, do span. He had moments this year. I think he's going to have a huge year coming up in 2023. Um there's just a lot of things that Florida State is doing in the transfer portal that other schools are doing okay in. Um, like, I think the University of Florida's got 18 transfers out and only one has came in. That's not a good look. Um, I think Florida State right now is ranked three or four in the transfer class. Um, that matters. I think eventually one day the transfer class and the recruitment class is going to combine as one, and they're going to you know consider that just – that's the committed class, regardless if they're transfers or regardless if they're recruitment. If they're coming in on that class, then that's going to be considered your grade. I don't think they're going to keep it separate too much longer. Um, but while they keep it separate, Florida State's in, in the third, fourth place era right now um, without any of these guys that I just named from the transfer portal committed. Uh, only Darrell Jackson out of those that I named was committed. Of course, you've got Kyle Morlock that committed. Then you've got the gentleman from South Carolina, which his name slipped in my mind right this second. But you've got some really, really good guys that have came in from the transfer portal. You've got some really good guys like Vandrevious Jacobs, Hakeem Williams. I mean, there's a number of guys, Keldrick Falk, that you're planning on landing for the 2023 class that are going to end up making this, this thing a real championship caliber type team. 
And I think after this year, 2024 gets even better. I think we're going to recruit even better in 2024. And Jaheim Bell was the kid that I was talking about from South Carolina, dynamic tight end. They At South Carolina, they used him all over the place. Didn't give him many options with the ball in his hands. I think he had a total of 25 receptions. And But each and every one of those receptions, he did something amazing with the football. Um, very dynamic player when the ball's in his hands. I think Florida State's going to utilize him better than where he was at. And – I think that Florida State's going to do a really good job with the guys that they bring in. I think you see three-star, you see four-star, you see transfer three-star, transfer four-star, and you're wanting to see those five-star guys like Hakeem Williams. You're wanting to see the five-star guys that uh, maybe some of these other schools are getting. And I do too. I'm not saying that I don't, but I'm telling you that I think the evaluation that Norvell and this staff does fits our system perfectly because look at what we've done this year. We're not in three, fixing to go to the bowl game, fixing to – we're going to win this bowl game. We're going to make sure that we win this bowl game and end up having a 10-win season for the first time since 2000 and, I don't know, 16, 17, somewhere around there. Um, and it's very important that we complete this season with a 10-win season, and then winning is going to cure all. We Y'all hear that a lot from multiple sources, but it's true. Um, you see what happens when we win, fans spin. And booster spin. Now we're, we're talking about the standalone facility, which we've been raising for for years. We also have the uh, business colleges going up as well. So Florida State's doing some really, really big things. They're investing. The community's investing into the university. The university's investing into the community. So there's a lot of things that are going good. So don't be hung up on the past couple of years. I think the past couple of years are in the past for good. Now, I think Florida State's going to do nothing but better each and every year moving forward. I think that Norvell and staff, whether it be new staff or the staff that's here, we dropped a video about that as well, so go check it out about maybe staff that's not going to be here after the bowl game. But whomever Norvell brings in, this staff will continue to move forward. We will continue to do better and better. Um we are eventually going to be in the talks every year of making the playoffs, especially when they expand to 12 teams. There's no reason for a Florida State team not to be in the playoffs every year if the playoff expands to 12 teams, which it will. There's no reason for Florida State not to be in that each and every year. Um, so we should be a contender again very, very soon. Um, being next year, I think we, we go and win the ACC championship. We become a contender. That's what should happen. Um this video is going a little bit longer than I expected. Remember, on Mondays and Thursdays, we have uh, our live episodes. I have co-hosts on like James Coleman, um, Taylor from Norvell Central, Chip from 850 Unconquered, or Unconquered 850. I said that backwards. Excuse me. But got some really good guys that come on and give their opinions. Uh, we do a really good job at going back and forth. Um, guys, I love doing this so much that you might catch me on some of these videos. Um there, there were some people that made a comment. I have no problem with it. I, I'm just, I just want to make sure everybody knows that your host at Spirit Addicts is not um, a drug fiend or nothing. I'm just really tired. Uh, I work 16 hour days, a minimum of 65, 70 hours a week, and I don't put this off. I don't put off talking about Florida State. Um, as you can tell today, I'm really energized. Uh, I got to sleep really well last night, and I'm off today. So. Now you get to see me when I'm not dead tired. I'm doing a lot of these videos on Mondays and Thursdays, which is right after work. We don't do the videos till 7.30. I have enough time to get home, take a shower, put on my Florida State clothing, do a rundown with the guys, and start the video after waking up at 4 to 5 o'clock in the morning and going all day until I got home. So I don't want y'all to think anything bad about me. Um, I'm not, I'm not um, anything besides tired from working my butt off. Um, I love doing this. I love giving y'all the information so much that I won't put it off. Um, so if you're watching this video, please make sure that you click the subscribe button button. If you haven't, I'm already messing up and I'm trying to get at least 50 people to hit the notification bell. And once you have 50 people that want notifications from the videos, it allows me to open up other things to the fans that you'll be able to see on the YouTube page. So if you haven't hit the uh, notification bell, or the subscribe button, please make sure that you do because then it's going to help elevate what I can put out to you guys and elevate how you can interact with the show. Um, so if you could do so, I'd really appreciate it. Um, I'm Chris Frazier, your host, as always, at Spirit Addicts. 
Uh, this is always brought to you by Game Day Vodka. Go check them out at gamedayvodka.com. Y'all have a good one and go Noles.